Hey everyone, I'm back. You might recognize this interface. It's Falcon, again. Uh, I know I said I wasn't going to do another Falcon video, and I stand by that. Uh, I'm not going to do another Falcon preset video. This time, I'm going to hammer down deep into my favorite patch, Angry Louie. We all remember that sound. That plasticky pluck sound. I love it, and I want to know more about what the hell's going on. So, uh, last night I was kind of just diving down into Angry Louie itself to see what the heck's going on. Turns out there's so much going on. It's crazy. It's a super well-made patch, and uh, immediately what I started doing was just taking pieces of it and like putting them into my own patches and doing stuff of that nature. And it's actually, um, it's been a good learning experience. So I figured I would also show you guys some of that because just going through the presets of this VST, it does it a disservice because it's not a, a VST that's like, hey, here's some presets, they're cool. What this VST does that is interesting is the stuff that I did not show at all because I had no idea what I'm doing. So we're looking at uh, the tree view here and I'm hammering down to the two layers that actually have the sounds going on and I've disabled the, uh, the key group thing. Like, I'm getting better. You can see I'm getting a little better. This little thing up here disables the, uh, the key group uh, image here, which blocks your view of the oscillator so now I can see the oscillator and it's, and it's spectacular so who knew Angry Louie was actually made from uh, two wavetables um, as seen here and a sub oscillator which is just a uh, a uh, sine wave so they come together really nicely um, if you hammer down onto the effects section you can see that there's a uh, limiter that's put on everything, so if you disable that, it won't sound as uh, glued together. And they got a little spark verb on here. And a little uh, uh, delay. Actually, I don't know where that echoes come from. Regardless, I'm wasting time here. Let's look at um, at these wavetables for a second. Like, here's one thing that I didn't show at all. <sighs> Let's take a deep breath. They have a ton of wavetables to choose from here. A ton um, that I didn't show you guys at all last time. Like, the, the two that come with this preset are only two. And this one's really, like... I mean, I, I wonder if I should even, like, I don't know enough about Wavetable to tell you why this stuff is cool, but look at the line as it goes from the top uh, to the bottom, and you'll see the waveform goes from looking like this at the top down to what looks like that at the bottom. So it gives you that movement. And then this one, um, it's just slightly different. So what, what you can start doing is say, like, well, um, I would like to try one of these other weird-looking ones. Already, you got a nice new patch that's set up exactly like Angry Louie was. Sorry. So let's look at some of the other ones they got here. Love this patch. It's a lot going on, and you might think like, "Oh, that's that's a lot. That's cool." Um, let's try like a more simple one. Eh, that might be a little. Thin. I want it to be. Uh, oh, let's try something that sounds a little rounder. Okay, that's fine. So here's another thing that I didn't know about, so I couldn't show you about um, when I did the video last time. What you want to do, we're still working with Angry Louie here. 
you can go over here to the uh, whatever this window is on this side of it and you can start adding oscillators to this patch like even just this layer so we've got the two wavetables going here but what if I want to add an FM oscillator you can drag it drag it right over here and now there's a little FM at the end and FM is a little finicky like I said before I want to do a video on how to make FM patches from scratch but basically the algorithm here is what you need to pay attention to and how you're gonna get a sound uh, from your FM patch. So what if I... Here we go. Uh, let's let's get crazy here. So, uh, man, I wonder if I... I don't have time to dig into it right now, but FM is basically a sine wave here down at uh, this little block that is modulated by this sine wave on this block, which is modulated by this one, which is modulated by this one, and this one modulates itself. So what that means is feedback. So one of these things at the end of the chain feedbacks and that's basically going to be the the grit of the um, of the algorithm or the the patch. But what I want actually is, yeah, that, that's better. So we got a sine wave at the bottom that will get modulated by a feedback one. So we have a two operator. That's what they call these things: an operator, um, a modulator, and a carrier. So A is the carrier because it just it carries the sound. So it's basically like the volume. So like turn it on or off. So A, you can see, is on full volume right now. So C, if I can, where is that D? D, sorry, very small font. I wonder why they went so small. D doesn't make any sound yet. So right now, this is all we got. It's kind of weird FM, but it should be a sine wave, but it's not. Oh, that's right. Uh, no, okay, I don't know. But anyways, check this out. What I want to do is uh, make my carrier to be two, so that um, the uh, the modulator is at a lower frequency. So when it modulates a higher frequency, it actually ends up telling you to have a lower note. So now we're getting a little more. Uh, a little more FM sounding. So let's also do that for this. Let's just get crazy here. Let's get nuts. Here we go. This is just my FM patch from scratch. Going through the Angry Louis settings. Now, if I add back the wavetables, I mean, this could sound crappy, but let's just see. Well, maybe I have to add it to, to the beginning. Wow. Oh. Here we go. So I had to lower the volume a bit, but... Close call. I really don't know what I'm doing with this thing yet, but you can see I just fiddled with Angry Louie to add this FM sound. So now it's Angry Louie plus a little FM. Um, so that's super cool on its own already. Super cool to just make those kind of changes to a patch. What if I'm not done? What if I want to get even crazier? Another, um, like I showed you all the, the different wavetables you could pick. Tons, tons of cool ones. Tons of ones that are like really inspired sounding and weird looking. Um, but the pluck oscillator and like basically an oscillator is a synth so whereas when I first bought this VST I thought it was almost like contact which is like a sampler because it does let you move in your own samples and while it does do that it also has a ton of um, like VST 
sort of synth stuff built into it that you can fiddle with. So instead of it just being an analog synth or uh, or something like that, or an FM synth, it's got all these synth that you can kind of just slot in. Like, I want it to be a wavetable slash FM slash pluck. And so what pluck is, it's kind of, uh, it's something that I still think is my, my most... Uh, it's the thing that intrigues me the most about this. It's the thing that got me to want to buy it in the first place because it kind of simulates what the Roland D50 synthesizer did, um, which is it combines an actual pluck sound with uh, like an oscillator, a synth, um, like a waveform. I'm not sure how they're doing it, and I'm not sure how close it is to the Roland D50, but in theory, it's a similar concept. So I don't know what's happening under the, under the covers here or behind the curtain, but... Um, I think it's still close. Uh, so what I'm doing here is adding a pluck of a dulcimer, which if I mute all of these, there are they. Do I need to add this to the beginning? It's kind of there. I don't know what else is there though. Like maybe that's just the Angry Louie patch settings because as you can see there's a ton of stuff going on here. Filters and quad blah blah blah. Like I don't know. In fact I've never showed you guys this stuff which is this is what the GUI is supposed to look like for Angry Louie the patch. So you can change with the high pass filter, the what, the width, the morphing, meowing, goof. What a goof. Uh, or the filter depth and the, the compression in the room. So I don't know how to really do that stuff yet. Maybe that'll be another video, but right now I've just got the pluck oscillator going with the sub, and I don't really know why it's extra sounding. Okay, maybe that's it. Just a guitar ball. Er, okay. Well, I think it's because I have the dynamics. Velocity is still set to do something, so... I kind of have to hammer on it, excuse me, to make it make a sound. Well, anyways, what I want to show you guys is much like the wavetable, they've got a bunch of plucks that you can add. So you're not really supposed to add a pluck to like a, a complicated patch like this because it kind of gets buried, but... When you start mixing it together, like, is there an overall volume level here? All right. Ill-composed uh, patch, definitely, uh, because I'm just adding too much and now I think they're all fighting. What you would probably want to do is add all these two separate uh, middle tier things. What do they call that? Layers. Add. Yeah, the middle is layer. So you, you'd probably want to add these to separate layers so that they don't compete. But what I've done is I just added them all like a crazy maniac. And... Um, Yeah, it's weird, weird plucks. Let's try some of this metal stuff. Coin stream. I wonder if that sounds different at the end. FM's out. Maybe you guys can tell me if you eventually start messing around with this, if the order of these things changes. I don't really know what's going on, but... Uh, I guess um, that's kind of the stuff I wanted to show you guys. That's uh, that's basically everything I wanted to show you. But uh, maybe I'll I'll end it. I'll end Angry Louie by fiddling around with this, and we'll see. Let me MIDI learn that.
that back a bit. I wonder if this is the speed of the wave tables. Yeah, I did something here. What did I do? Okay, so the morph depth. Oh, okay, so morph depth is this. I don't know how... What do we do here? This part is still... This is god-awful, this part. Editing this modulation uh, window at the bottom. They need to do a video just on this alone, UVI does, because I have no idea how to edit this stuff properly. I was trying to add vibrato on my pitch wheel for a patch I was making myself the other day. Had no idea how to do it. And I've used VSTs before, so I know how to do this stuff. But this, yeah, this is something else. Um, I'm sure it's simple once you see it in action, but man, I, I don't know how to do it yet. As you can see. But uh, learning, learning experience for sure. Let's, let's end this in style. Let's end this in style. What am I trying to do here? Uh, uh, there we go. Let's just get crazy with it. That sounds about right. And Spark Verb sounds so good. I'm really bummed that I can't use it as an effect. That sounds good. I like it. Anyways, that's... That's my deconstruction of Angry Louie the Patch. Um, this VST gets more intriguing the more I learn about it. Hopefully, uh, it, um, it gets... Unraveling it uh, for other people might shed some light on just what the hell it actually is because um, I think it's more than I thought it was and I'm, I'm pleased with what it is in addition to, uh, to what I thought it was. Uh, I still have to show you guys adding samples to it uh, in a similar way to contact because uh, that's another thing that it does that you can actually start incorporating into all of these oscillators. And, uh, and make your own, like, Angry Louie with your own samples built in, just like I did with the pluck and all that stuff. Only, uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to, 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 like, mesh all that stuff together. But, I mean, starting with a patch and just mangling it, that's, uh, that's a good way to go. And I'm, I'm figuring it out as I go here. And hopefully you guys are uh, enjoying this as well. Uh, okay, that's it for me. I better stop now. Uh, catch you guys on the next video. Bye.